Hello everybody, so this is Grace and in this video I will be talking about natural deduction proofs with quantifiers. And so before you watch this video, please go watch lecture four to familiarize yourself with all the natural deduction rules and so that this proof will make a lot more sense to you. So the problem we will be proving comes from the additional natural deduction practices, practice problems which have already been uploaded to Canvas. Um, this here is question five. So today we're going to prove this question here. So from this question, we can see that there are two premise given and a conclusion. So in some cases, when we look at proofs, we often think, oh, let's start with what we're given and we just work our way down in like a linear fashion um, and we'll arrive at our conclusion. Um, but for natural deduction, it's actually better to work your way inwards and because you build both your conclusion and your premise can give you a lot of information so we kind of like want to squeeze our way to the center of the problem so let's start off this proof so we have two premise so let's start off by writing what our premise are so one we have our premise for all x we have p of x implies q of x and so this is our premise one and then our second premise here is our premise two here is for all x not q of x and this is our premise two So from here, we have our two premises, and then we can also write out our conclusion. So at the very bottom, let's just write out our conclusion for all x, not p of x. So this is what we're trying to conclude. So this is the kind of the setup where we're trying to work our way inwards. So we can actually extract a lot of information from our premises and from our conclusion. So looking at our premise, we have two for all statements. So something we might think of doing is a for all a limb because we have these for alls. And then we also see that we have an implies here. So maybe we want to do an implies a limb. Looking at our conclusion, we also have a for all. And so maybe we want to do a for all intro because we want to get that for all there. And then we see we have not px. So in our premise, we have a px, but we don't have a not there. So maybe something else we could consider is a not intro. So going from here, let's kind of start off our problem. So our next step, there's kind of two ways to think about it. So we kind of, we want to have this for all statement at the end. So we might think, Let's do a for all intro here, where we start off with some arbitrary element so that we can introduce this for all. This makes a lot of sense also because now with this arbitrary x0, we can apply a for all a limb on line one and two as well. So let's get started with that. So let's start off a box and in our box, Let's put our, our arbitrary variable x0. So now going from here, we have our arbitrary x0. Now we can apply, can apply a for all a limb on both of our premise because they're both for all statements. So on line four, we would have p of x0 implies q of x0. And this Uh, for all. Now we can do the same thing to line two. So on, so for our next one, we would have not q of x zero, and this will be a for all a limb on line two. Now let's go back and look at the rule we were going to use this for. So we have our x zero here, and we also have 
our for all statement that we are trying to conclude here. So what do we need to end off this box with? This is the kind of like the work your way inwards kind of method. So our final line of the box to bring out not um, for all x, not p of x, is, is to have that predicate statement. So this part in terms of x0. So let's close off this box right above our for all. And let's say not p x0, because this is what we want to conclude at the very end of the box. Notice that for both of these, we don't know what line number they are yet. We're just letting them sit there and yeah. So now we kind of have our pieces that we want to work with. So if we look here, we have a not px0. So from kind of the rules we were looking into before, there's three ways to think about this problem. So first way is we have not px0. Looking at this rule here, we probably are thinking of doing a not intro because that's what we said when we looked at what we had in our premises and conclusion. So maybe we want to start off with a px0 and get not p of x0 from that. Or another way of thinking about it is what do we have that we haven't used? We haven't used lines four and we haven't used lines five yet. So from line four, we have px0 implies qx0. Said that maybe we want to use a for all, um, an implies a lin. So to use an implies a lin, maybe we would have to assume a px0 and then we can perform an implies a lin. Or looking at line five, we have not qx0. We notice we have not qx0 here and we have q of x0 or like px0 implies q of x0. So we have like this x0 from the line before. So maybe there's going to be some contradiction between those two. So going with our intuition, let's start with using a not intro. So we have this not px0 and so let's think about using this not intro. So on line six, we're going to have a new box here. And inside that box, we will have px0. And this is going to be our assumption. So from here, well, we see we have px0 and we have px0 implies qx0 from in line four. So now we have both pieces for our, um, for our implies a limb. So on line seven, let's do an implies a limb. So we would have qx0 here by an implies a limb on lines four and six. So from these two lines, the px0 implies qx0, we have px0, so we know we have qx0. Now we know we have qx0, and the only line we haven't made use of is line five, not qx0. So let's look back over here at our rules. So which rule matches Well, if we look at this not a limb, we have like our qx0 and not qx0, and that implies false here. So maybe we can make use of that. So let's say in line eight, using lines five and seven, we arrive at a false. So here, this is by a not a limb on lines five and seven. So now let's see what we have. So if we look back at our not intro, we said we start with a P and we arrive at a false to pull out the not P. Let's look back at the problem we have here. We have a PX0, we have a false, and we have not PX0. So these two match up perfectly. So actually right now, what we know is we can actually end off this box and this here would be line nine. So line nine, we can say that by a not intro on line six to eight, we get this not p of x zero. So now we have all our pieces for our for all intro as well. We have x zero, we finally arrived at not p x zero. So now we're gonna pull it out of the box in this final line. 
So in line 10, by our for all intro on this entire box, so lines three to nine, we can conclude that for all x, not px. So I'm gonna now close off these boxes on this side as well. So then basically, we have gone through this entire proof, kind of working our way towards the center and making sure all the pieces match up. Hopefully this helps you guys with natural deduction a little bit more and kind of the thinking we go through when we do natural deduction. Thank you very much.